cozy. Thank you for welcoming us into your home. Absolutely. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And the coffee's good. Absolutely. <laughs> well, there's nothing better than French press. So. That's right. <laughs> well, why don't you just start by explaining your process as an artist? Um, well, I, the work really moves from much more realistic work like this mm -hmm. one here to very abstract work. I've always worked that way. Um, this, for instance, is uh, the Redwood Library. The a actually, the the attic above the Harrison Room. Okay. So I did a whole series of paintings of the Redwood Library, mm -hmm. just basically straight paintings, but also with my little weird way of looking at things. So it's 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 a nice painting, but it's also not all entirely comfortable. So it's much more representational, straight painting, no collage in this. Okay. And then that one over there is much more abstract, although it's based on photographs from from this one and from this whole I series. See. So they're related, yeah, yeah, but not in the same genre. You, yeah. You, so when you start a work like this, you go into a space, say the attic above the Harrison room, and see the space. Do you right. take a bunch of photographs and then yeah. work off of the photographs? Yeah, I take lots of photographs. In fact, okay. this place was only accessible from the outside of the building oh. and then of like an 80 foot ladder or something and they were they were doing their the uh, discovery phase of restoration and my then husband was head of the uh, operation so I got to go up there so I stayed up there after everybody left and took lots of pictures so I bring those pictures back mm -hmm. I start y using them to make the paintings and then from those, all those pictures, I start ripping them up, changing them, printing more, printing sections of it, um, and then start making a collage, which will express a more abstract version of it. All right, so you know, the, there's all kinds of scaffolding when they were working on this, mm -hmm. and I love scaffolding and things in sort of in in the in process, things in process, and things that are old and decayed and that kind of thing. To give it the feel of motion. In some instances, yeah. to, to, yeah. there's an evolution in the right from this is where I started, this is what it looked like, and this is yeah. how it made me feel. Is that where you're going with your abstract? Yeah, term? and yeah, and then if you see both of them together, you don't necessarily make the connections, mm -hmm. but there's that whole issue of pulling together lots of disparate things to make a structure. And I really am very interested in structure, and that's why I like scaffolding and things like that. Um, so that's where that whole series started. So I did a group of these, mm -hmm. and then I started on the more abstract versions of them. Um, but they really, they really do all go together. But yeah. it's 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 a it's just another step right. for me. Well, you experiment with various mediums, correct? Yeah, I mean the, these are these are oil. That's oil and acrylic and fabric and mm -hmm. photographs and all kinds of stuff. And then the newest work I'm doing is all acrylic because I need I'm working much more with layers and I want to I want it to be as archival as possible. In fact my my goal in life is to have my work be dishwasher safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's it'll never happen, goal. it'll never happen, but that is my goal. Well I think it would be possible. You just have to <laughs> Not really sacrifice. Like no, if you put it in it's gonna yeah. get all gummy in yeah. Which would be interesting. You'd have to just have to encase it in, say, glass. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then once you've done so, right. feel free to wash. Right, right. <laughs> you spoke of your new series. Um, yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you started with that series? Well, it, my day job is as a personal organizer. Um, and when I work with clients, I usually take a photograph before and after, if they're willing. So this one that started this whole series was a toy room, which was probably the size of my downstairs here. Oh, oh so a very it's large enormous. space. Three children played down there. Every time they went down there, they fought. Uh. You know, it's it was it was it was an astonishing room, but it was also scary on some level. So the wife and I worked in that room for I think it took us three days, Ooh. going over every you know tiny. You know, and she knew what these things were. I'd go, what? What is this? She said, Oh, yes, that's uh, GI Joe's backpack when he goes on a weekend. I go, <laughs> okay, and we put it in the little boy's pile. So that room became a kind of symbol of of a lot of the stuff I do with my clients of this kind of fullness 
this amazing, wonderful, I mean, they were all beautiful toys, but ultimately it was a, it was a depressing, confusing, uncontrolled space that wasn't working for any of them. There was a little Lord of the Flies yes. down there. A lot of fighting going on. Yeah. There was a, girl, a little girl and two, and two young boys. Great kids, great parents, but they just had too much stuff. The daughter had 45 Barbie dolls. Oh my goodness. 45. Why? So. Well, what do you hope to achieve in transferring from the mess, the chaos, yeah. because the series is called Tipping Point, correct? Yes, yeah. What do you hope to transfer from that into your work? I think trying to get the feeling of, of what I saw when I was mm -hmm. there. I mean, we talked earlier about that whole... When you see something on television, like mm -hmm. there's this hoarding show on now, that every, now everybody's convinced they're a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to disabuse a lot of people. Um, when you're there in the actual space, and you're with a client, you feel that tremendous uh, depression, anger, confusion uh, that they feel. And I can usually tell within about 20 minutes what, what the issues are. Mm -hmm. But to be in the actual physical space, you know, I pick up on that very clearly. And part of me wants to get that feeling on the canvas. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. It's, it's something very intangible and on some level, and yet that's what I'm really interested in. I mean, I could paint, you know, a million paintings of messy rooms, but it's, it's not about that. Because everybody, oh yeah, my room was to look like that. It's not about mm -hmm. that. It's about getting the feeling that's there in that room. It's to transport that experience Yeah. for others yeah. who yeah. aren't there yeah. seeing it. Although I must say, when I showed them at the art museum, that one, that one last year. Everybody wanted to talk about their closets. Not too, many people, not too many people wanted to talk about the painting. So I may have failed. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. so in the process, when you're looking at these photographs, you've taken a series of photographs of a particular space and you're ready to turn them into um, a painting or a collage. If it's a painting, do you take multiple photographs and then create something new from it to try and capture all areas of the space? Like, do you look at it and say, you know what, the space is cluttered, the space is chaotic, but the feeling doesn't come unless I add from this side of the room to here, and from this side of the room to here, and yeah. that door is in the wrong place, or... Yeah, no, so you, do... yeah. No, you have to do that, because the goal is to do the, to capture the feeling, not, right. not to paint the space. I'm right. not a realist in that sense. Okay. So I take out and I add. I mean, I'll show sure. you. We can look upstairs, but there's the one that I that was at the museum last time is basically two photographs put together, and then I've added other stuff right. and taken away other stuff. There was one that had a, a gun in it, and it, the gun is too strong. Of, there's too much baggage attached mm -hmm. to the symbol of that, yeah. and I took the gun out. I took a shoe out because it was too... Hmm. It gave the scale a little too much reality. So... You have to always make those choices. And right. at some point you put the photograph, you put all the photographs away. And you just sit with the feeling that you want to have when you want when somebody's looking at that work. And then you make your decisions. This goes, this stays, this is too green, this needs to be tipped. Mm -hmm. All those thousands of decisions that you make as an artist to try to get the essence of that room. Um, and I usually ask people <clears throat> if I could use their photographs. But I'm told that, you know, if you're making a painting, it's a conglomeration of things right. anyway. So one person I didn't, I wasn't able to get her permission, but I've used, you know, some parts of, right. of it. So, um, you know, but you have to make lots and lots and thousands of decisions about all that mm -hmm. stuff when you're doing it. Because otherwise it's not a work of art, it's just a recording. Right. It, it becomes, not recording. Right, no. Yeah. It's more of a narrative now. Yeah. Yeah. When we were speaking earlier, you mentioned seeing things artistically, where when you walk into a room, um, you know, one man's jump is another man's treasure. <clears throat> right, right. Well, <laughs> there's always that part of me that's the artist looking at the room. So I saw somebody last week and I looked at their room and I thought, oh God, this is so cool. <laughs> I mean, part of this, I'm saying that because 
I get very enthusiastic when I work on people's homes because I really want to make a difference in their lives. So there's that one whole part of me that mm -hmm. wants to get in there and do it, where they want to just go take a nap. I right. want to do it. So there's that part of my brain. Then the other part of my brain is going, oh, this is a really cool space. <laughs> so when I'm taking pictures, and I know in the toy room I took more pictures than I probably needed to take, because <laughs> it was just amazing, because there were just these little paths and... G.I. Joe's and big Lego, you know, I didn't even know Legos came that big. Right. Just major stuff. It was just, you know, I was, okay, I'll just, just take a few more, just to take a few <laughs> more. So I really, uh, I probably took more pictures than I should have that day. But, yeah, there's always that part of me that's looking at it as a visual thing and how, how that visual thing can be transferred to a painting. Sure. And then I think about that when I get back home, once I've entered the information about the client and all that kind of stuff and what we need to work on. Then I take time to sit and think about that space and how that space made me feel and how I might transfer that, sometimes quite abstractly, mm -hmm. to a work of art. And what rewards do you get from it? See, the problem is that I have this tremendous desire to see these things and I know I can't see them unless I make them. Mm. So that's the dilemma. I want to see that toy room as I saw it in my head, but I can't do it. I can't hire somebody to do it for me. I have to do it. Right. So I have to paint it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I have to do it. Now, and that's the reward. I see it, and if it's done, if what I wanted to do is done, then it's like, okay, good. That's the reward. And do you ever... Um, have a hard time parting with certain pieces. Are there pieces that someone you, you finish and someone wants and it's like giving up a child? Like, no, no, you've I... got, you got to get over that. Yeah. <laughs> the only one I'm not going to sell is that one because I based the whole color scheme of this corner on oh. that. I did my Martha Stewart routine. <laughs> so... And I'm not going to sell I reserve the right to not sell that one. But I don't, don't usually do that. Because... You, you know, and mostly I want to get it out there. I want other people to have them in their right. homes. And, and so I can do more of them. And if you pay me, then I can do more of them. So you have to get over that. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's stuff you feel when you get out of school. But I've been doing it long enough that you can't go there. <laughs> so right. It's not a good idea. You're, you're based here in Newport, but you're a member of the Bromfield in Massachusetts, right? Yeah, I've been a member of the Bromfield since 1990. It's an artist-run cooperative. It's, I think, uh, it's the actually the oldest artist-run gallery in Boston. Great. Yeah, and they've been around a long time. It's a good group of people, and it includes nobody who still thinks that the world owes them a living because they're an artist. It's all adults. <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It's great. And you so, do you have work at the art museum, the Newport Art Museum? Well, there's one piece there now that's going to. Um, yeah, for the member show. It, it's behind the desk. Right. Yeah, so it's that one. And then there's going to be one up. I think Fidelity is doing a show at the Providence Art Club of all the people who've won awards over the years that right. they've sponsored. So there's a small piece that's going to be up there. Plenty of opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then this other show up in Beverly, Massachusetts, but that's at a private company. Um, done through this organization called Art Focus, which runs, it, it's a company that that um, puts on art art shows, and then the, you, you go and speak about the work during the day, and the employees come. Hmm. It's actually an amazing... Hmm. Well, would you be amenable to us taking a look at some of that yes, stuff? Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah, if you, as long as you know that two of them aren't quite done. Well, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> we'll get to experience the process. Yeah, the process yeah that's right. <laughs> Well, why don't we yeah. do that right now? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, everything we're done. Okay, this is my studio up here. My favorite room in the house. Oh. Come on up. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, I know. I love it. I love it up here. It's a wonderful space. It's my little world. When you said attic, I was worried <laughs> I wouldn't be able to stand up. No, 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 no. It's, it's quite, quite big. Quite big. So how did you first know you needed to be an artist? Oh, God. I've been doing it forever. I think I've always known it, and just become something, um, you know, I was art major in college, but I was also in psychology, 
and I worked with emotionally disturbed children for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then I had an opportunity, because my first husband was in graduate school, to take a year off and just do art. He said, do it for a year, see how you feel. So I thought, okay. And at the end of the year, I thought, well, I guess I have to make my decision. I thought, now I've already decided. Yeah. And that's when I made that, that shift that you do where you go, okay, I'm doing the art, now how am I going to make a living? Instead of how am I going to make a living and then do art on the side. So, you know, that, that was a big shift. But I had always drawn and written poetry and, you know, done all that right. stuff that you do as a kid. Um, but it was really that. And then I, then I went to graduate school. Um, at the museum school in Boston, um, had a child and worked out all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I've been doing it ever since. And it's not, it's, on some level, it's not something you have any control over. You just, that's who you are. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. And I hope to be like Monet, where they would wheel them out of the garden and I didn't they didn't duct tape in those days, but <laughs> tape a brush to his hand and he would paint. I want to be that old lady that does that, and then get up and go to yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make them tape it to your hand and then go to yoga yeah, well, class? Well, after they untape it. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, we'll be dishwasher safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe by then I will have figured out the dishwasher safe issue. Well, now that we're up here in the studio, yeah. I was wondering if you'd be willing to, you know, to take us through some of the works that are close to completion and then maybe walk us backward to some of the works that are really in process. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Let's do it. Okay, these are the, this is the stuff that I work with right now. I used to do only oil and collage, but um, since I'm doing stuff in more layers now, I really needed to move to acrylics. And I have a friend who's a, a golden representative, and so she's taught me a lot of stuff. So all this stuff is, is, is new in my studio. So it's in that difficult, steep learning curve of learning how to use all these things. I've got open acrylics, I've got uh, fluid acrylics, I've just got every kind you can think of, and then all the different kinds of um, layering kinds of things. One that's like encaustic, one that uh, kind of puts a clear surface over the whole, whole work. Um, so I've been doing a lot of experimenting and I've made a lot of mistakes, but um, I'm really learning what this stuff could do, and it's not like it used to be, so it's much more complicated, um, but much more interesting. So these are the ones I tend to work with the most, um, and then there are a few uh, that I use mostly for the collage stuff, and then there are different ones that I use for surfaces and um, for texture. Um, so that's pretty much it. So I just keep all my tools here and make a mess, and then at the end of the day I put them all back. So I know where I stand at the end of the day. Okay, this is all a very important part of my work. This is all collected detritus from either my clients or friends who have been wonderful about dropping little packages of crappy stuff off of my front <laughs> porch. Um, what I'm collecting is all little tiny things that you don't know what to do with, or you don't know what they are. Um, a lot of what I do in people's homes is open drawers and look in and go, what the hell is this? <laughs> so um, I started collecting little tiny things. And so these drawers all have very tiny things in them, which I've incorporated either images of them or the actual things. The actual things become a small uh, sculpture that I've been doing. Um, and then some of them actually become part of the, the collage based ones as well. But I want that whole, there's a lot, people have so much stuff and it's all, a lot of it is little tiny things. Um, I had a client say to me once uh, when we pulled something out of her closet, I said, what, what is this? It was something with little straps and stuff. And she said, if I knew what it was, I might need it. And I thought, oh God, that is so perfect. Because people don't know what these things are, and you go, you know, like this up here is something that her daughter, this woman's daughter, gave her. She has no idea what it is. She has no idea at all. So people are always holding things up, going, "What is this?" And I say, "I don't live here. You live here. I have no idea what this is." So I've been sort of collecting all these things and collecting all kinds of 
to-do lists that people have, have written out, which are hysterical and very poetic sometimes. And I keep them all in here, in this, in this thing. And then when I need inspiration or I need a little piece of something, I just go in here and pull it out. And I try not to keep this too organized because that's my tendency is to be organized. So that when I go in, there's always some surprising thing in there. So um, this is very important to my work. Um, even though some of it may never appear in any of the work. This, this cart represents wonderful things. So, Jimmy, this is one of the paintings that you took from numerous photographs and turned into this sort of painting collage, really. Right. It's, it's not, not exactly. like you're collaging photographs, you're collaging them with a brush. Yeah, which I did by blowing them up big at Kinko's. And moving stuff around and getting the right, getting the right size and the right feeling. Then I traced it, and then I traced that to the canvas, to the board, All right. and then I started painting it. But this one is a combination of two, basically two photographs. Okay. So the top is one, roughly, and then the bottom is another. Now, as I look at it, it does have the feeling of chaos you were talking about. Yeah. That yeah. This is where I don't know what to do with myself anymore. Yeah. My children have created this. <laughs> yes. yes. And no matter what I do, it's never going to be fixed. Yeah. So they call you in, you show up, and you think, wow. Right. Yeah. This is something. Well, especially since this particular room was also had warm yellow walls and a kind of white floor, so it, it almost felt as if everything was floating. That's why I didn't right. put the, the wall in the background in this okay. one. It just goes, sort of went on forever. So I was going to ask about that. It feels like here at the top, it's this ethereal, almost like a fog. Yes. Like if you were to yeah. wander 10 feet further, you'd see this room again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that's part of the whole thing. But then, I, you know, I added more, I took out more. This whole thing in the front, this uh, the garbage bin, bin yeah. yeah, that is from another picture. And actually, I basically made that one up um, because it needed... You need to be feel that you were blocked. That's what you feel when you walk in these rooms. You're blocked, and yet a lot of the stuff is on the floor, and it's not on the on the shelves. It's 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 on the floor, so you can't walk. Or there's just little pads. So in all of these, in this last series, it was a feeling of going in and feeling blocked, but looking at stuff that's amazing. It's just gorgeous. I mean, toys are just. And I actually started making up toys because I couldn't always tell what it was in the photograph. And, I, and toys have all have certain properties. Sure. So I thought, well, whatever, I can make up my own toys. Yeah. So some people come in and say, oh, yeah, I know what that one is. I say, no, you don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's not a real toy. It doesn't exist anywhere but yeah. here and yeah. in my brain. Yeah. But as you look through it, you see the conglomeration of dolls and, you know, like Nerf boomerangs. And is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's definitely that, for me, that component of where do I start, but yeah. it's very vibrant and colorful, so there's a sense of hope. Yes. You, you can clean, clean that up. Yeah. And we did. And we did, and the kids were overjoyed. Yeah. Because then they could use the space again. Yeah, you know, and the two boys wouldn't have to, you know, fight and have Barbie dolls in their area. Right. And, you know, it was, it was very satisfying. I, that's one of the things I love about my job. Now, when you're putting these together, do you go ahead and change scale? Do you like say, you know what, there was a penny in the corner and it spoke to me, so I'm going to make that penny? No. No. You don't, you don't try and because manipulate it that Because I want you to be way. in a real space. Sure. I mean, having the Legos be really big. Because they were really big. Yeah, they were really big. I don't want to, that's a whole other level that's doesn't, it just complicates it. It doesn't uh, hone in on what I was interested in. So keeping a sense of scale is important. Is important. Yeah, yeah. So it's a human scale, you feel like you're standing there looking into a space. Mm -hmm. right. If you see an enormous penny, if it's not a toy, then what is it? Or in your hand, right yeah, close to your face. Yeah, and that gets a little too, it, it's a whole yeah. other uh, place that you don't need to go to. Right. I, I, it's not necessary. So a lot of it has to do with, you know, factoring out things like that. Right. But then that also adds a, a level of difficulty for you, I would suspect. Yes. Yeah. As you're putting it together, trying to figure out yeah. exactly how big was this, yeah. and you have to compare yeah. it with other photographs of known sizes, and right. then when right. you blow it up to this size, I mean that... 
And people have lots of associations for all this stuff too, because they know what all these, a lot of these things are. And I didn't want to get too much into a narrative about stuff, so I want to keep it as abstract on some level as possible. It's a tough, it's a tough middle place to be, but it's still the most interesting place for me, where you have the abstraction, you have the, the visual layout that's clear as an abstract thing, and yet you're dealing with real objects. Right. And that balance to me is the most interesting, but it's also the hardest to do. Sure. It's the hardest. What do you find most difficult, and maybe it depends upon the day, but do you find it more difficult to collage painting or with photographs? Well, painting in part because you can't change your mind as easily. I mean, you know, with a collage, I can rip it up and start again. I can add another layer. Once you've committed, I mean, there was a whole gorgeous section down here. Yeah. I just killed me to paint it up. No. But it didn't work. It didn't work. So, you know, I, had, I, re I left it for a couple of days and came back and said, okay, it doesn't work, get rid of it. So, you know, but that took me, it had taken me like four days to paint that whole section. And now it's covered up with an enormous garbage bin. So, you know, <laughs> but you, you know, you have to make those decisions. Right. It's not, you know. So you, you do these first. Yes. And then once you're done, you move into the more abstract Yes. So from here, yeah. you go on to do works like we find along these other walls, using yeah. the actual items, Yes. in many cases. The, either the actual items or images that I've taken that I print on my own. And that's why I have a whole pile of collage pieces that I can right. call upon. So you, yeah. you take the photographs, you print them, you paint from them. Yes. And then you incorporate those actual items into yeah. these hopefully yeah. one day dishwasher safe collages. <laughs> Well, let's look at some of them. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is the work that I'm working on now, which comes from the earlier ones of the toy room. And these are all collage with some added color pencil and acrylic. So and these two are not finished, so don't judge them <laughs> yet. Um, and these are all based on collage, but they have lots of layers in them. This one, for instance, has a layer of thread, uh, acrylic, uh, acrylic that looks like encaustic and then various layers of paint in between that. Um, it has collages, pieces based on the before pictures that I take of clients' homes and and then I have to add more onto this one. This one's got a long way to go. Um, this one over here is a little, is the same um, type of thing but it's based, it has more uh, tracing paper with drawings on it which are the drawings that I use to do the large paintings, and I've saved all of them. So I cut them up and, and mix them with some of the stuff that's in those drawers that I showed you earlier. Um, <clears throat> and this one also has many layers. So when you when you get up close, you see it's it's like when I'm looking at people's homes, and it's like layers. It's like archaeology. I'm going down through time to look at everybody's stuff, and that's true of these two as well. You can see the tracing paper here, and then these are straight photographs, um, and then there's some drawing and some extra painting in these as well. Um, so that's what this whole series is, um, and they all come from this, the last one I did. <clears throat> and then this one is the latest, this large one is the latest that I've done that I will be doing more of, and I just got a new printer so I can print some images larger. Um, this is all collage, but then added acrylic on top and in different layers. Um, behind this top, for instance, is the three or four layers of collage and then several layers of what looks like encaustic on top, but it's much more. Oh, that was great. Well, thank you for coming. It was really nice. It was fun. It was. And it, it was, was great fun. to see the process and, you know, what we can look forward to in yeah. terms of your work. Well, we can't wait to see the whole yes. exhibition. And yes, it should be interesting. <laughs> it will definitely be a tipping point. <laughs> thank you. We'll take so care. Much. An artist okay. never rests. I know, I know. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. Take care. Take care.